Hello and welcome back to another webinar series of Circuit Digest. In this video, we'll be discussing about a company called Sensecrass, which provides next generation agri-tech and food tech solutions for a sustainable food production. So it is fair to say that Sensecrass has been working on the next generation agricultural products because they are using drones and rovers to collect data from the field. And they are even using artificial intelligence and machine learning to perform some sort of data analytics on the data collected from these agricultural fields. So being curious on what Sensecrass is doing and to know about its products, we approached Mr. Rahul, who is the technology head and product designer of Sensecrass. So let's hear from him. Hi Rahul, how are you doing today? Hi, hi, and I'm doing good. How are you? I'm great. Thank you so much for joining us on a holiday. Yeah, yeah. Glad to be here. Okay, fine. So uh, Rahul, can you tell us what's the idea behind Sensecrass? Like what kind of solutions and services does Sensecrass provide? Uh, sure. So basically, let me quickly uh, give you a brief introduction or a story of how we started. So me and Lalit were part of a World Economic Forum initiative, which was working into climate change. Mm -hmm. So that's when uh, we realized, uh, looking at a large scale data and coming from a farming background, that mm -hmm. simple solutions using AI technology can solve large scale uh, problems in farming industry. So basically, Sensorus today provides a soil intelligence platform that gives you real-time information on your uh, soil health conditions, environmental health conditions, and various other key decision-making uh, data mm -hmm. for uh, farmers in simple terms. Mm -hmm. And we also give actionable insights to farmers on how do they improve their profit while using uh, less amount of resources like fertilizers, pesticides. Mm -hmm. So we do this using a lot of uh, data points across various uh, channels. Mm -hmm. So we give them precision agriculture uh, information, like you have to focus on one specific area for uh, those fertilizers. And then uh, while reducing the fertilizer usage, we mm -hmm. also improve the yield output. We understand every crop mm -hmm. requires precise information, precise uh, attention, and mm -hmm. we uh, deliver those actionable insights to farmers. So we do that using uh, our uh, SaaS application, which is uh, a web and mobile application. Mm -hmm. And we also have our own in-house uh, patented IoT uh, soil probes, which give mm -hmm. over 14 different uh, parameters to farmers. Okay. So Rahul, when we are speaking about these uh, agricultural automation or these modern agricultural solutions, what type of farmers can be benefited by this? Can only the large scale farmers be benefited by this? Or can you give a case study on uh, how much of a land were uh, automated and how, what were the effects that Sensecrass brought into the field? That's a very interesting question, right? So these technologies at a very early stage when it's the next agri-tech revolution has just got started. So these technologies at the beginning are pretty expensive and they need to uh, become more economical over time. Mm -hmm. So we have taken a different approach with our business model where we offer our uh, solutions for large-scale corporates, mm -hmm. which are into ag ag basically agro-corporates. Mm -hmm. So which are uh, indirectly, uh, the end customer would be a farmer where basically our uh, services or solution becomes almost free for the farmer mm -hmm. and uh, our uh, user or like uh, actual customer is the agro companies itself. So our end user is farmer and customer is agro company. So this way uh, we are actually creating a win-win model where agro companies can make their products and services more efficient. So uh, we are talking about a lot of data collection here. So what kind of data do you collect from a field and how often do you do it? And what is the interval between collecting these data? So we basically collect our information from various uh, sources, uh, mm -hmm. primarily uh, being our uh, IoT probe, which is mm -hmm. a soil sensor, uh, mm -hmm. collects over 40 different parameters at three different depth levels, including NPK. We use optical spectroscopy technology to do this. So apart from this, we also collect information from uh, public and private uh, satellite sources like Landsat, Eurosat, okay. uh, where uh, we process this information, these images through our GIS engines. Mm -hmm. And then we uh, do web scraping from publicly available uh, soil health uh, reports, right? So, and historic soil health information that uh, farmer gives. Uh, we also uh, log information on their day-to-day uh, -day activities, like farmer uh, gives us uh, his farm activities as a log, log uh, table. So we capture that information. And one of the most critical being uh, weather and uh, climatic environmental uh, information data source. Okay. So these, we come, uh, on average, we uh, do somewhere around 1000 data points per crop cycle. 
Okay, so from the field, only these soil probes are deployed, right? Only these soil probes mm -hmm. are used to collect data from the actual field where the solution is deployed. So uh, exactly. what type of soil parameters do you collect from this probe, Rahul? Sure. So we primarily collect NPK since the NPK soil, that is nitrogen, phosphorus, sodium, and uh, then uh, we also collect soil temperature, uh, soil moisture, mm -hmm. uh, then the lux value uh, from uh, the chlorophyll point of view. And then we have uh, various other uh, uh, parameters wherein pH values and uh, compounds, soil compounds, and these kind of uh, sub uh, nutrition values as well. Okay. So uh, you told these probes will be dis uh, deployed in the field. How many probes would be deployed and at what intervals are they wireless? Like, can mm -hmm. you give us an idea about that? Sure. Sure. Uh, so that's another interesting question. So we, we uh, basically uh, built our whole. Uh, probe or the product itself modular. So depending on the customer requirements, we can quickly modify or interchange based on the network technology available at that particular location. Okay. So only the network unit can be uh, swapped with the rest of the probe. So uh, we offer as of now a LoRa and mm -hmm. we have a 5G enabled uh, version as well, which is backward compatible up to 2G. So which is primarily we are working in Europe and US uh, areas so uh, these have been the technology part uh, coming to how many sensors goes per field it basically depends on uh, the land itself so if it's an even landform uh, then uh, one sensor supports up to 10 acres we can average out the values up to 10 acres and it also depends on what crop you're growing if it's a high crash crop we recommend more sensors uh, within a small plot area mm -hmm. so uh, what is the battery life of these sensors when you say wireless i believe it's being operated on battery so can you give us an idea how yeah. long uh, can it run on a battery uh, so we enabled this with a solar uh, part system so uh, it's uh, uh, renewable uh, that way but uh, in case even uh, if, if it's having a bad uh, uh, sunlight or uh, of that sort it it uh, uh, can last up to two uh, two days okay so Rahul, you told that you're collecting about a hundred different data points from that field. So uh, what are we doing with these data points? Your website also mentions that you're using artificial intelligence and machine learning. So what does AI and ML has to do here? And uh, what benefits are we getting from this hundred different data points that you're collecting? Sure, sure. So at core, SenseGrass is basically an AI and data science company, which is having a use case with Agritech. So uh, what, what we basically do with these data points is, uh, I, I could probably explain you with one uh, simple use case or a microservice uh, mm -hmm. called a plant card. So basically this plant card uses historic information and various other uh, environmental condition data to give what are the ideal conditions for crop to get maximum yield output. For example, if it's corn, what needs to be the nitrogen value of that particular uh, geography of mm -hmm. uh, plant and uh, what needs to be the value of nitrogen at that particular geography. So this has been computed with a lot of other uh, conditions, like it considers soil replenishment, it considers environmental changes, macro trends, mm -hmm. and uh, a, a real time how the soil is behaving. So then it gives insights to farmers on what, what uh, needs to be maintained to get maximum yield output, while also taking care of long-term vision of the, uh, of the plot area itself. Okay. Uh, another use case is, for example, uh, we, we actually, we kind of compete being an AI agronomist, okay. wherein uh, conventional agronomist basically gives uh, suggestions and gives uh, actionable insights to farmers. Right? What we do is a step ahead. We actually observe or uh, the AI model that we created actually mm -hmm. recognizes various patterns that are going into the crop cycle. Mm -hmm. So, for example, with a similar uh, environmental condition that is going to come in next one week, mm -hmm. we can really understand what kind of uh, uh, impact it would have in the next crop cycle. So these kind of observations and pattern recognition is only uh, possible uh, through machine. Humanly, it's becoming really tough or like to have that huge uh, macro view of the entire data is tough for a, a human level. Right? So that's the kind of uh, AI power what we use uh, at SenseBus. So Rahul, when you started this journey, what kind of technical difficulties did you face? Like you would have, uh, you told that you are basically a, a data analytics company. Uh, sorry if I'm getting that wrong. But then mm -hmm. when you started making these hardwares and deploying it into the field, I believe you would have faced some difficulties. Can you go through that? 
Sure. So uh, basically, uh, we were first uh, in the market who used optical spectroscopy to develop this technology. Basically, when we incepted, we were a pure hardware company. Okay. We, our first uh, entry was through our hardware product, which is a soil pro. Mm-hmm. Uh, later on, we pivoted being a SaaS first platform. But uh, when we started, the RT uh, stage problems were basically to understand how, uh, like, do we cut down the cost, make it more effective to uh, mid-sized farmers? And uh, how do we make sure these are the standard uh, protocols that we need to follow? And a lot of other uh, production level uh, uh, challenges where a prototype was quickly made because we already come from a technology background, but when we transitioned to make it a production level Mm -hmm. product, there are a lot of things that we learned on the way. Uh, how do you see the supply chain in India to make all these probes and stuff? Where do you source your uh, components and everything? Rahul? Sure. Sure. Uh, so uh, our primary uh, source has been uh, uh, from uh, both uh, Taiwan and China. But we, right now we uh, are actually planning to get this all done in-house. So uh, we, we uh, basically do it on request basis. Uh, we have a, a very limited stock as of uh, date, but we also uh, have uh, supply chain partners uh, who we could work with. That's mm-hmm. So Rahul, apart from using this soil probes to collect data, how do you see drones and rovers for this application? Like how would you compare drones and rovers with a soil probe that is permanently deployed in the field? Right, right. So uh, that's an, a, a very interesting uh, uh, direction that uh, we all, I mean, agritech in fact is looking at. I, I would bet my uh, money more on uh, a rover part because uh, drones again is a capital intensive thing and uh, generations of evolution will actually bring that down. But rover becomes really interesting because uh, we are actually in one of our product roadmap, we're actually creating a modular drone where mm-hmm. it can be used for multiple purposes. So mm-hmm. right from uh, doing farm activities like spraying, uh, fertilizing, or even uh, pest detection on top uh, uh, soil detection, crop detection. So these uh, kind of activities can be uh, moved around. And uh, one very strong uh, motivation for us to work on rover Mm -hmm. is uh, basically the same soil probe can be used uh, across even a 500 acre field, right? So we can quickly swap and- From one place to another. Yeah, we have pit stops across the plot area and Rover will collect these data at various uh, pit stops and then get back the information. Okay, so SenseGrass has a working prototype for a Rover now. Uh, how much have you progressed with this idea, Rahul? Sure, so uh, the basic framework or the, like the chassis part or the framework is ready. So we are working on making it all terrain. So mm-hmm. that's been uh, the kind of uh, side, like it's a side project for us. Our primary focus uh, has been uh, making our AI model more efficient and uh, get uh, more data. So, but but that's definitely something that we could uh, get out in the market in next one year. Okay. So another thing that kind of intrigued me about SenseGrass is its subscription-based model. So I think you are mm-hmm. one among the few companies in AgriTech who provides a subscription-based model instead of a permanent purchase. So can you tell us about your plans and pricing and why did you choose this subscription-based model, Rahul? Yeah. So uh, like I, as I told earlier, uh, right from the beginning, we started uh, empathizing with the customer, right? Like uh, we come personally from a farming background. I mean, farming family, me and Lalit. So we really understood uh, this is a capital-intensive business for uh, farmers itself. So they don't see an ROI uh, on such capital intensive uh, point of view. So that's when we came with bundled packages where uh, the CapEx cost of the sensors itself or the hardware is what we divide across the subscription. So that's how they, it becomes more affordable. It's, mm-hmm. uh, it's a win-win situation on both ends for the company as well because uh, later after a year mm-hmm. is what we see starting uh, getting returns. And that's a recurring return, right? You know, mm-hmm. Even the investors and the whole ecosystem is happy about it. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's a kind of innovation that we have done. Uh, but we are at a very uh, early stage to actually fine tune our bundle packages. Like we are just got started with that kind of model. Uh, as of date, we have been primarily a license based uh, large sale uh, company. Like we basically do with agro corporates. Right? Mm-hmm. So we have been uh, doing uh, uh, annual licenses and uh, large scale deals with uh, this company. So uh, Rahul, as you told, uh, smart farming technology is just taking off 
especially in india there is not even much awareness about it so how do you see the market for uh, smart farming technology rahul yeah so that's one very important thing that uh, rest of the uh, trend will follow i mean it's the next big wave uh, that is going to happen in startup right because uh, the obvious challenge is to uh, cater to uh, food needs of huge population that we are constantly growing so uh, m- making ourselves optimized or efficient in uh, farming is the next uh, obvious challenge that lot of technology companies need to address on this direction actually we are uh, kind of planning to create a uh, operating system for farming so mm-hmm. that's our vision for next 2 uh, to 3 years so we would want to be the core platform on top of which various additional uh, extensions or modules uh, can work on top of uh, our platform so we we would be the data net uh, or the grid of data and lot of other players can work on top of this data to give services so that is it rahul i am done with all my questions thank you so much for answering them is there anything you would like to add up to this interview uh thanks ashwin i uh, really enjoyed talking to circuit digest and i have been a avid reader of the same